Well, greetings, Urban Crofters, and welcome to this next session in our series, A Heart for the City. And the journey so far has been, uh, <clears throat> first of all, thinking about a redemptive framework for considering city issues. We'll come to that again in a moment. Uh, then knowing our God-given call to the city. Thirdly, seeing the city as a focus for cultural reimagination. Last week, we looked at international opportunities, and today we are looking at creativity and the arts. So let's pray together. Laura, thank you so much for the opportunity of thinking about these different um, aspects, our uh, thinking about mission in Cardiff, and we pray for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit in shaping our thoughts and our reflections on this important issue. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just start with a bit of theology. It's always a good place to start, isn't it? When we're thinking about um, God's call in our lives. And what would this redemptive framework look like as we think about creativity today? So um, here are the four phases of redemptive history. And let's think about the impact of each of those. First of all, the fact that we are able to celebrate our God-given God reflecting, God honoring creativity in all areas of life, not just the arts. So I will be talking about the arts and what follows, but um, let's just remember it has an impact, has an implication for every aspect of creativity in our lives. Every aspect of our work can be creative. Um, so that's a wonderful place to start in the sense of actually that we're created in the image of a creative God. So much that could be said about that, but let's just Put that in place is a really important theological cornerstone in what follows. Then the impact of the fall, recognizing that uh, our creativity has been impacted by evil deception, by human depravity, and needs redemption. <clears throat> Which leads us then to the uh, role of the Holy Spirit, who can bring inspiration for that redemption in all areas of our creativity, fresh imaginings of what could be uh, when we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then consummation, the reality that God is going to draw together uh, redeemed creativity uh, in all of its wonderful aspects into the glory of the new earth and the wonderful reality for us that we can look forward to an eternity of being creative on the new earth. Um, everlasting life being creative so if we're ever feeling frustrated oh i would have loved to have done this for my life or had a go at this area of creativity you have got that opportunity in eternity to try whatever aspect of creativity you want without any deadlines without any sense of oh my goodness i've only got limited time how amazing is that so um just thoughts about thinking out specifically about Cardiff as being um, the capital city of a creative nation. It's interesting, isn't it, that the word capital comes from the word head. And so there's a sense here that the head city and the body of the rest of the nation should be aligned together. So clearly Wales is a highly creative nation. If you've heard the interview with Kath and Di, you'll heard Kath remind us of that, just how creative Wales is. Think about I Stedford Arts Festivals. Think about the way sometimes you describe Wales as a land of song. Um, and so if the whole nation of Wales is, uh, has this reputation for creativity, then surely the capital city must be in alignment with that wonderful reputation. And so there's a calling, therefore, as um, Christian people in the capital city, that we should be praying and acting with other people to allow creativity to flourish in this amazing city of Cardiff. Just a little word here about the interaction between science and art. I've said um, just in what preceded about creativity can happen in any aspect of our lives. And I think it's so important right at the start that we can just like um, do away with this false division between the creatives and the scientific people uh, because science is full of creativity. Just think about colour itself. I mean, what more basic concept in relation to creativity could there be than the idea of colour? And colour itself, of course, is, is just, you know, it's a scientific concept, isn't it? In the sense of wavelengths of light that are um, absorbed or transmitted. So 
uh, that in itself just reminds us, okay, there's no point or sense in any division between scientific enterprise and, and artistic enterprise. There should be a blurring of those boundaries. Think about these other concepts that are so uh, important in both the area of scientific research and investigation and, and the world of creativity through the arts. Truth, wonder, design, beauty, all of that is equally important and valuable in both areas. So just want to say that by way of kind of uh, making sure we don't have this false division between the two. And um, this is a great quotation, is that we're all born creative. It takes a little while to become afraid. I think that relates to the sense of actually, again, uh, maybe another uh, area of misconception that actually some people are creative and some people are not. The reality is we're all created in the image of a creative God to be creative. So uh, it's just a lie if any of us feel, oh, I'm just not a creative person. So um, through all that follows in our discussion of opportunities, please let's remember, we're all creative people, just we're just creative in different ways. So I want to, having said that, in terms of like the interaction between science and art, um, architecture and engineering are great places to look at the, the most wonderful intersection of those two areas. Um, and looking at some iconic buildings in our great city as representatives of that. Where better place to start than the Millennium Art Center? What an incredible building. We should feel so, so delighted that we have this amazing building. What a stunning architecture for a really world-class art center in the Bay. And um, the inscription uh, of the words are amazing over the entrance to the Millennium Art Center. So this is what the, the poet Gwyneth Lewis wrote about the words uh, that she created. I wanted the words to reflect the architecture of the building. The strata of the slate frontage of the Wales Millennium Center reminded me of the horizons just beyond Penarth Head. The sea has traditionally been for Cardiff the means by which the Welsh export their best to the world and the route by which the world comes to Cardiff. The stones inside the theatre literally sing with opera, musicals and orchestral music. And I wanted to convey the sense of an international space created by the art of music. Those are amazing words, aren't they? In these stones, horizon sing. Those are the English words on the right. I just want, I, as I was reflecting on those words, I've, I've never really reflected on them before. But then I came across this incredible distorted photo that is utterly beautiful, would you not think? Um, about uh, those words created, looks like the hull of a ship, doesn't it? And that connects with what um, Gwyneth is saying about the importance of the sea in relation to Cardiff, connects with our international theme last week as well, doesn't it? But how exciting to see the sense of um, embarking on a voyage of discovery towards captivating horizons of new creative possibilities. That was the phrase that, that came to me, thinking about these living stones and horizons singing, horizons, the dreams, the expectations, the possibilities um, away in the distance, but we wanna make them reality um, through our church partnerships together. I'm excited about that. So here, a few other iconic buildings, uh, the National Museum. I love this distorted photo as well. It makes it look like a circular building, but of course we know it's not, it's a straight edge. But how amazing that, you know, the sense of how creative photographers can be in the use of different lenses to create artistic effects, even in representing <clears throat> uh, physical buildings. So great collection of art, the National Museum, free, remember, uh, also closed on a Monday, so don't forget that. Um, so we look forward to getting back there after lockdown. And then just reminding us too of um, the great uh, musical ensembles that we have in our city, BBC uh, National Orchestra of Wales, uh, great, great orchestra, fantastic quality of musicianship in that orchestra. And uh, some of them are connected to our building because they come along to Little Notes with Jude. Uh, so there's quite a number, particularly they were coming on a Friday morning um, before lockdown, a whole a bunch of them, I don't know, there's like six, six or seven members of the orchestra who came because they, you know, professional musicians love to come bring their kids to sessions led by a professional musician. So that's brilliant. Welsh National Opera again. We have world-class um, music going on in our city. It's so exciting. And then we think about training the next generation of professional musicians in the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. Again, a stunning building, would you not admit? 
Uh, it's architecturally absolutely stunning. And when you go into the atrium, you're looking through to Butte Park, such a sense of just like the beauty of the natural world impacting the world of uh, musical creativity, dramatic creativity. It is a stunning building. Um, and as you will have heard, in, if you've listened to the interview with Julia Plout, uh, connections for us there. And again, I'm partnering with uh, Julia and some others that we'll come to in a moment. So that's exciting. And then as I was searching for photos of um, iconic buildings in Cardiff, uh, I came across this photo. Interesting, in an age of social distancing, is it not? Uh, we look forward to those days of being part of a massive crowd and rubbing shoulders with people once again, do we not? But uh, you will be aware that Roald Dahl has very important connections with Cardiff. And there's a wonderful celebration of James and the giant peach outside the castle. So um, great literary figures associated with our city. Um, and then ch the Chapter Arts Centre in Pont Cana. If you've never been there, do go and hang out there. It's a brilliant place. Lots of great creativity going on. Local art centre celebrating uh, lots of Welsh art particularly. Um, so uh, that's a great um, asset to our capital city. And then of course, just as we think about local art centers, we've got the gate, just um, a five minute walk from our church building. So great to be in partnership with them. Um, <clears throat> so all of that to say that we have great iconic buildings, great uh, centers of our, in our capital city that we can give thanks for. And that's just a, a snapshot, isn't it, of a few. Now, I'd love us to be aware of just the sense of um, the story of Urban Crofters and just being reminded that actually uh, Jude and I really embarked upon this most recent phase of our ministry journey um, in terms of trying to use the art. So uh, five years ago, um, 2015 to 2016, we were leading this mission expression called Art and Soul. And we had a, uh, we started a community choir, we started a film club, we started artistic dialogues, meeting with Christian artists, interviewing them about their creativity and how their faith impacted their creativity and vice versa. Um, and so really uh, Urban Crofters was born out of that missional expression of using the arts in mission. And very much at the beginning, uh, we felt God say to us, I want you to use what you're passionate about in terms of being productive in mission. And Jude and I love the arts and we're passionate about the arts. And so that's why I, uh, you know, God was saying, that's what you love. So just use it, uh, use what you're excited about. It's just, you know, it makes so much sense, isn't it? In terms of what we're passionate about in life, that's how we should do mission together. So um, that's really, really important for us in how we go forward. Now, just interesting little um, biblical, uh, perspective, important question. Who is the first person in the Bible to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I can hear some of you saying, was it Abraham or maybe it was Moses? Uh, but no, it was an artist, a creative called Bezalel, Exodus 31. See, I have chosen Bezalel, the Lord says to Moses, and I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Amazing. And he is the first person who is described as being filled with the spirit of God. Exciting for creatives to know that. And he gave his name to an Academy of Arts and Design in Jerusalem, the Bezalel Academy. So let's remember the importance of uh, creatives being empowered by the Holy Spirit because it has a very long pedigree in scripture. Now, why are the arts important for mission? This is a really important area for discussion, is it not? And so we'll, I'm sure all of us as creatives come up with creative ideas for why that should be the case. Here are some of my thoughts. The Bible itself creates a model for us because the Bible is both missional in drawing people to faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord, etc., and embracing creativity because it's a collection of stories and poetry. It encourages music and song along the way. So the Bible is both missional and a creative expression. Engaging with creativity connects us with the creativity of the Holy Spirit. That's really important, isn't it? 
Think about how creatives have just felt a revelation of God's truth and love as they've created. The arts allow us to explore deep questions of life. For example, our struggles, our doubts, our anxieties, our identity, our meaning, our purpose, our calling, our vision, our destiny, those and loads of other deep questions can be really powerfully explored through the arts. The arts inspire us. And when we're inspired, then we become alive more fully, don't we? And when we're alive, then we're more open to new ideas, fresh ideas of faith. A sermon or a lecture might be seen as the front door of our minds, while an artistic expression might be seen as the side door into our minds, engaging people's thought, provoking reflection without being overtly confrontational. You see that with, with drama, don't you? How plays can um, uh, communicate really important truths, but in a very um, sensitive, careful kind of way, rather than being overtly confrontational. And when our emotions are stirred, then that can become a bridge for truth-filled revelation. It's important that we get in touch with the truth, of course, rather than being just fully shaped and led by emotion, but emotions can become a bridge for that truth coming into our minds. And then it's just a brilliant means of gathering people together with a shared interest because loads of people are passionate about music, passionate about different uh, kinds of art. And so it breaks down social barriers, doesn't it? Because we come together as we're sharing uh, an interest, uh, sharing a value together, it develops community. So hence, again, in our uh, three key words, connect, create, transform. Now, like we did last week, I just want to run through a number of opportunities that we have um, to use creativity. And the first one is creativity in our homes. So, for example, we could invite friends and neighbours for a creative experience in our homes, couldn't we, in terms of building our friendship with them. We could watch a film together that would be really interesting to discuss. We could discuss a book together that we think could be interesting. We could place uh, some music together if we happen to be uh, musical, or even just like, you know, play recordings of music that we enjoy. Uh, we could share a favorite poem that we might have. Uh, we could do craft work together, including, for example, at this season of year, bringing friends round when lockdown finishes, of course, um, to make Christmas puddings, even if we have to do it outside. Why don't we stir up the dried fruit and the brandy, whatever else you want to put in your Christmas pudding? and enjoy being creative at this time of year. A few ideas there. Opportunity number two, invitation to rehearse music. Now, uh, that may be the first time some of you have seen the Roth Chamber Orchestra. They were rehearsing in our building on Wednesday evenings. And I'm really excited to say, I have joined the cello section of that orchestra and I'm loving it. So it's a brilliant opportunity for me. There's only about 30 or 40 people in the orchestra, if everybody's there, but I'm loving it. Cause people go, we have like, uh, how long do we have? We've got two hour rehearsal, that's right. And then we go to the pub afterwards and just chat over a pint of beer. Great, great fun. So if any of you play uh, an orchestral instrument, come along once we get going again. Then there's the Cardiff Children's Choir that meets in our building on a Wednesday afternoon. So you will have heard Julia Plout speaking about that. So excited about that partnership because Julia is absolutely brilliant in conducting children and has written loads of music for children as well. Really exciting. And I mentioned in Art and Soul, we started a community choir. We've taken a bit of a break because this has been quite an intense year. And then on the back of that, we've had COVID. But as soon as we can, we want to get going with our community choir. And maybe we can do joint concerts between the orchestra and our community choir. Exciting opportunities. Now, number three is First Friday Live Music. So, so far, we've only managed two before lockdown started, but we did manage uh, February and March this year. And we connected with some brilliant jazz students from the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. And we'd love to expand that into, in terms of other musical genres as well. Um, and people like Jesse are now part of us who are brilliant musicians and who can do gigs on a, on a first Friday 
so we can expand the repertoire to other types of uh, music that other people may enjoy. Really important in this, can I say, the audience and performer dialogue. I want this so much to be a theme, a recurring theme, a core value of what we're doing in Creativity at Urban Crofters in breaking down the fourth wall, it's sometimes called. In other words, breaking down that barrier between the audience and the performer, between the audience and the artist. So we want to, and this is what we've done so far, is actually we've interviewed the artists and find a bit about their life story. Why are they jazz musicians? What do they love about jazz? Who's their favorite jazz musician? How do they want to develop their jazz music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that just develops this dialogue between audience and artist. It brings community, it brings relationship. Stories are so important, are they, in terms of like being uh, bridges between people. And so that's what we want to embrace as a core value, relational artistic experience. Opportunity for creative partnership with little notes. So, um, again, you'll have heard Julia Plout speaking uh, about uh, our Sunday afternoon family concerts. We had one in November. I think we had one beginning of, I think it was in February, was it? Um, and Julia is utterly brilliant at putting these concerts together in partnership with Jude. So if you look at the photo there, we had a great time at this concert. Uh, these percussion students from the, uh, the Welsh College came and they performed this piece. It's supposed to be played on um, garbage cans, I think it is. But they thought, oh, how great to have uh, high chairs in our cafe. And so they played that piece using high chairs. It was brilliant. Such, such fun. And we had like you know, 100, over 100 people at that concert packed out. So we look forward to non-social distancing in the future. Then uh, special events that Little Notes uh, um, does, uh, Christmas celebration we've done every year. Again, maybe different this year, but we'll get back to that um, next year, hopefully, doing an Easter event, but lots of opportunity there. Then Sound of Wales. I hope you've managed to listen to the interview with Kath and Di Woolridge. Um, so just reminding you about Sound of Wales as a collective of musicians, creatives, and storytellers based in Wales who love Jesus and above all want to be a part of revealing his glory to the earth through the sounds of heaven. Sound of Wales is the most amazing organization and uh, we're so excited that we're in partnership with Kath Woolridge. Uh, and enough said on that. Then the next opportunity, a children's arts festival. So what we'd love to do would be to uh, have a week, uh, probably near the beginning of the school holidays every year, and for uh, Julia Plough and others to be involved in the creation of a new musical. So the, the kids who come along, who would come, uh, for example, from the children's um, Cardiff Children's Choir, and they would be pre-rehearsed in some of the songs. So they're not having to, of course, learn songs from just Monday to Friday, but they would know the songs at the beginning of Monday morning. And then Monday to Friday, they would put the drama together to create a musical. And we would love that those would be, uh, that week would be led by professional Christian artists who can not only bring a sense of uh, developing the skills of the children, but also just developing um, lots of different um, just developing their dreams and their fulfillment for their careers. Uh, so we'd want to interview the artists through the week, day by day, so that the, the children have a sense of hearing the sweep of the, the, you know, the creative arc, if you like, of um, the artists' lives, and just stir the imagination in these children of actually how they can be creative through their lives. I think it could be a brilliant opportunity. So we're really excited about developing that. We hope we can get going next summer. Then uh, the opportunity of films. So you'll see in that delightful, I think it's a chicken, probably more than a turkey, but we had a Thanksgiving evening last November when we had a showing of Mary Poppins and people came along. Shout out here for Kerry and Claire, who came along brilliantly dressed as chimney sweeps, I seem to remember. Uh, so it was a great fun evening and uh, great opportunities for us in terms of having community cinema screenings, and also not only entertainment evenings, but also discussion evenings. I, we would love to see that develop. We've only had a few film evenings so far, but just so much opportunity there. For example, we could have a festival of short films. Feature film might be long, you know, too long in terms of two hours of viewing and then discussion. But if we had a series of short films of maybe like you know, 10, 15 minutes, then we could weave discussion and debate into the fabric of the evening. 
And along those lines, have you heard about the Bible Society film competition called The Pitch? I have to admit, I had not until recently. But The Pitch is an annual short film competition uh, when, where filmmakers can pitch, hence the title, um, a concept, a film concept for a short film based on a biblical story. The Bible Society, of course, are um, investing in this because they want to uh, increase biblical literacy in the UK and to have people be aware uh, of more and more of the richness of Bible stories. And so um, a recent winner was Andy Toovey, who is a local creative from Pontypris. Um, and he won um, with a pitch about a, a short film about David and Bathsheba, um, set amongst gypsies. How creative is that? If you look at the recent winner on the Bible Society website, um, this young woman called Vanessa, I think her name is, who won with a pitch about um, the story of Elijah and the widow um, called The Widow's Last. And it's a beautiful film. It really is only two minutes long, but it's very, very beautiful film. So you can, um, there's a link on the Bible Society website to look at that. So great opportunities there. Then uh, just whizzing through this because I spoke about this last week, cultural celebrations. So again, uh, connecting with people through creative celebrations. Um, and we would hope to do this once a term. We did it last year with the Burns Night. Um, and again, lots of creativity can be woven into those kinds of evenings. Could be an evening, could be a weekend, could be a week long festival if you really wanted to, with lots of creativity woven into that. Then uh, on the back of that, thinking about food and drink uh, as an opportunity for creativity, because of course, Food is, is one of the, the most popular and regular expressions of creativity in our lives, isn't it? Three times a day, we get to be creative with, with our meals. Um, so having parties and celebrations with different types of food, festivals and workshops about food and sustainable eating. And then the last one, how could I possibly omit the visual arts? Jeanette, I imagine, has been longing for this to be coming up in our discussion. Uh, so we can have painting exhibitions, we can have photography exhibitions, sculpture exhibitions, crafts being on display. How about if we invited fine art students to be able to use our building uh, as a location, as a space for their graduation exhibitions? Um, really, really exciting opportunity. So again, um, especially thinking about the hall, uh, at our church where there's plenty of world space for hanging paintings. So um, good opportunities there for the visual arts as well. Oh, and meet the artist parties as well, breaking down the barrier between the artist and the audience. So if fine art students are doing their graduation uh, exhibitions, let's interview the, the student. Why did you paint what you painted? What are you trying to communicate? What's your vision for your life as an artist? Exciting conversation. Now, I want to finish where we started with, at the Millennium Arts Centre because um, I spoke about the English inscription on uh, the Millennium Arts Centre at the start, and we can't forget the Welsh one, can we? This is what Gwyneth wrote about the Welsh words she used. I wanted the words to reflect the architecture of the building. Its copper dome reminded me of the furnaces from Wales's industrial heritage. Now, um, I'm not a linguist, my friends. And so I'll leave the Welsh contingent uh, to be able to pronounce that for me. Um, but the translation is creating truth like glass from inspiration's furnace. That's what those words mean. Those are really exciting words. And the furnace spoken of there is a place of refinement, isn't it? And so I see in this a prophetic declaration in both the English words we looked at, at the beginning, but also these Welsh words here now at the end, a call to express God's beauty and God's truth through creativity to a world plagued with ugliness and lies. I think that's a really exciting perspective and calling. And so uh, let me finish with this as a creative call to all of us to be involved, at the very least in praying for this, and hopefully in enacting it as well. Communicating God's prophetic truth through the refined silver of our creativity from the Holy Spirit's furnace, furnace of inspiration so that others find faith in Jesus. 
I'm excited about urban, how urban crofters can partner together with creatives in being able to fulfill that calling. I hope you are as well. Let's remember the, the Bible verse in Psalm 66, verse 10. For you, God has refined you like silver. So we're going to um, move into breakout groups on Sunday. Uh, and I put quite a few questions this week. Uh, maybe if we have four groups, we look at two questions each. But um, here are the questions. How have the arts and creativity been helpful to you in finding faith and in deepening your faith? What mission opportunities through creativity do you find most captivating? What distinguishes the redeemed creativity flowing from the furnace of the spirit's inspiration as opposed to unredeemed creativity? What problems exist in using the arts and creativity in mission? How can we guard against these? How can we best use the creative opportunities that present themselves through our church building? How can we bless and encourage artists and creatives in Cardiff? How can we facilitate creativity in our workplaces through the week? And do we have any other ideas for using creativity in mission? So plenty to discuss there. Um, and we look forward to discussing them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to think about creativity and the arts um, in mission in Cardiff. And I pray so much, Holy Spirit, that you'll inspire fresh imagination amongst us in our thinking, our reflection, in our discussion, and in the next steps that we clarify for us that we will turn ideas into reality by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>